and to have this time to call upon thee, to cast our cares upon thee, um, and to be drawn nigh to thee in prayer. It is, Lord, a, a not just a, a duty, and it is a duty, but it is also, also a delight. And Lord, not always an easy delight because the flesh is against prayer. But we do pray for thy help to be granted in the time of prayer. But also, Lord, that our hearts will be warmed as we see Jesus building his church, even in these few places where thou hast given the privilege of having us toil along with thee, with thy spirit, uh, Lord, in those places of Liberia and elsewhere. And Lord, even now as we consider something of that message that was spoken by our Lord to the ministers this morning, uh, Lord, we pray that that would feed our hearts also. And so help us this evening, for we can do nothing without thy help. We are weak, uh, unable to do anything good in thine eyes if thou art not in it. And if thy spirit is not given to us, and it is not according to thy scriptures. So hear as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please open the copies of... Uh, no, let's um, sing first from Psalm 150. Psalm 150. And... Uh, <laughs> Please stand to sing these four verses. is a slight comment from our preaching on the Lord's Day. This is not about public worship. This is go out and play the instruments. So there's even dancing here. So this is not uh, a contradiction of the temple worship. Just thought I'd throw that in. Um, and yes, they did have organs in those days. They had the two ancient organs. One ran on uh, water, water organs uh, in the very ancient days. And what would the other one be? The, I think the other one was air in some way. Please open your copies of God's Word to the Gospel according to John and chapter 2, please. John chapter 2. So John chapter 2, and we'll read from verse 13. And just those few verses. Uh, John chapter 2, reading from verse 13, please. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen, and sheep, and doves, and the changers of money sitting. 
And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Amen. And it's really with verse 17 um, that we were encouraged um, in three uh, specific uh, points by the Reverend Murray um, speaking to the, the ministers and the elders of the presbytery this morning uh, concerning that phrase that is taken from Psalm 69 and verse 9, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. So just a few thoughts on that. Uh, firstly, the Christ was committed to the work that he did. He was committed uh, to that work. And of course, if we consider in the, in the aspect of, of ministers, of those who are elders, deacons, uh, there is a, a, a clear and demarcated office of work uh, to be carried out. But of course, this, uh, this can be a more general understanding as Christ was committed, are, are we committed to the congregation? Are we committed to that role that we have in the household as, as, the, as the, the leader, uh, or the head of the house and in the preaching, um, or as br fellow brother and sister in the faith, as husband and wife? Um, are we committed to the work and to the place that God has put us? But he, firstly, just looking at that word, the zeal, it is a very interesting word. Uh, it is the Greek word, zeal, from the Greek word zelos. Um, and it has its positive and its negative. Uh, the positive side of that word would be things like um, ardor, heat, enthusiasm. But on the other side of that word, the negative side of that word is also where we get another word, jealousy. So the word jealous and zealous, they sound the same because they are exactly the same. Well, I think one came through the French and one came directly from the Greek. So the negative side is that jealousy and that envy, a desire against someone or a desire to be better than someone or to have what they have as a negative desire, but the positive, and of course that's the context here, the positive zeal is that, that desire, that heat and that, that ardor, um, a godly zeal that we understand completely a godly desire for the house of God has eaten up Christ. And that was mentioned. In fact, that very episode is fulfilled. That, that, that prophecy in Psalm 69 is, is here fulfilled in, in the beginning of Christ's ministry, but also toward the end of Christ's ministry. The, the zeal he has for the worship of, of God. And the question is, do, do we have that zeal? for the worship of God, to have that desire to go in. With any, everything in life that we can become jaded, we can become disappointed, it can become routine, but that's not what we see with the Lord. And, and as the Lord is our shepherd, and we are to follow him in all, in all these matters, he, he leads us by example, but he leads us in the way that we should go. And so we have it with the, the Lord also in being zealous for the house of God, for the worship of God. Again. I thought it was so interesting in, in receiving this, this message from the Lord after the preaching of the, on the public worship in those, in, in those different periods. Again, the, the zeal that there is for the, for the worship of God. We see that. And Christ himself, who is the very repository of all godly zeal, that, 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 that um, and if we need it, and if we lack it, then, then we go to the Lord who grants us and if we think of anything that we do lack we are encouraged to call upon the Lord if we think of, of James uh, and James uh, says you know it says if any of you lack wisdom let it ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him and it's not just wisdom it is also uh, this zeal but this zeal is to be linked with wisdom this is to be a wise zeal this is not to be a zeal without knowledge as, as um, 
as Paul upbraids the, the Jews with. He says, oh, they're, they're, they can be so zealous, but it's not the godly zealousness. It's a, it's, it's a zealousness without uh, knowledge. It's a foolishness. If you think of Saul of Tarsus for, as, a, as a great example, uh, be, before his conversion, then he was zealous. He was zealous for the traditions of the fathers. He was zealous for the name of the Pharisees and zealous for the, for the land of Israel. Um, yeah, his zealousness was what? It was threatenings and murders were coming out of his mouth against the followers of Christ. But once he was saved, what, 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 what do we see that the Lord doing with that natural zealousness that he had? Well, it becomes sanctified. And then he becomes Paul the Apostle who was zealous for the gospel of Christ. And no journey is too long. No, 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 no trouble is too deep to, 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 be, uh, to be undertaken for the Lord and for the Lord's glory. So he has a, a godly zealousness. And, and he didn't get into the ministry immediately on his conversion in that way. That's not true in the sense that he, he did speak of Christ in the synagogue. Um, in Damascus, but he wasn't on the mission field immediately. We know that he, he spent three years in Arabia, and we believe that that was the time when he had uh, personal revelations by Christ in teaching him in the, the, the ways um, of a disciple. As he was, he was a disciple, an apostle, out of time. Uh, the other disciples and apostles had had, had their time with Christ, and, and, and here he is, appointed by Christ, shall we say post-mortem, because he's not dead, but after his resurrection, post-resurrection then, uh, as, as he's going up um, after his ascension into heaven, that Paul is appointed personally by Christ. Uh, but but that, that zeal that he has is with a godly wisdom, and is used of the Lord to establish church after church after church um, uh, throughout a, a lot of the civilized world of that time. And so that is for us to understand something, that we are to earnestly desire to have this, this zeal. And, and as I mentioned, we, we, we can lose the zeal. We can cool in our ardor. We can, and that's what we call backsliding. Of, of the true believer, I'm not talking about the false professor, but the true believer that can, that can cool in their ardor toward the Lord. Well, let us be reminded this, this night to have something of that zeal that Christ, that Christ had. And so when we consider that Christ was zealous for God's worship, um, we see what he's, he, he, he does. He comes in, and we see that in verses 13 to 16, and he comes in and clears everything that does not belong in the worship of God. And here we have uh, probably many things that were pragmatically decided at one point, that it was obvious if they were traveling from a la long place, that it's easy for them just to bring, to, to sell uh, their animals up in Galilee, say, uh, and travel down to Jerusalem, and then buy new animals in Jerusalem, as, a, as opposed to traveling those many hundreds of miles uh, with the animal itself. And so there was probably a, a good pragmatic reason, and, and man is very good at having pragmatic reasons for putting things into the house of God that don't belong there. But here we see that this has gone far from being just a, 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 a practical solution. There has become a sinful invasion, um, more so. Um, and then the Lord comes in and sees these oxen and sheep and doves, and we know um, some aspects of this from the Scriptures, that these animals were, were, were sold and bought and and no doubt the, uh, the temple authorities were getting their percentage and, and the money, of course, was, was, would, would be at a rate. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you were to buy the temple coin, and, uh, but it would never be the same as you were paying for it. Or you'd pay more in, in, in the Roman golden coin just to get the temple coin than, than it was actually worth. But that, they, they, that was the situation. But this offended Christ. This deeply offended Christ. And it's not that Christ did not understand the importance of having the sheep and the oxen, because they were all pointing to him. They all had his name on it, as it were. They were all little signposts pointing to him, to their need of him. So he wasn't offended by the sacrifices, of course, because this was all part of his law for his people, that they would believe on him. 
So he's not, a, he's not offended by, by the sacrifices. He's not offended by them giving their tithes and, and giving money and offerings to the Lord's work. He's not, he's not offended by that. He's, he's offended by all the greed and the sin and the, and, and the uh, yeah, making merchandise of the house of God. While we know, and it says elsewhere, it is to be a house of prayer. It is to be a house of fellowshipping with the Lord. And that prayer and that fellowship is also through the sacrifices, but also through prayer. So Christ was very, very zealous uh, for the Lord and for the Lord's uh, worship. And here's an interesting point, though, and this is really the context of Psalm 69. Is in the context, David, as a, as a type of Christ, says that he's persecuted for his zeal for God's house. He himself is persecuted, and, and that's very true. When zeal for Christ and for his worship eats us up, uh, then we ourselves will be under attack. You know, the people would consider when we, we say, well, the, the Scriptures are very clear about this point and that point and the other, and then, you know, suddenly you're a Holy Joe or you're a Bible basher or, or you're one of these narrow-minded and small-minded believers. Yeah, that's me. Narrow-minded. I was about narrow from the... From the uh, from the left hand cover to the right hand cover. That's how narrow my thinking is. And that's good. It's good to have that narrow minded thinking. Or oh, you're brainwashed. It says, yes, I am brainwashed. Do you know how filthy and sinful my brain was? And this is what I need to wash it with with the Word and with Christ's blood and by His Spirit. And so when the zeal for Christ, for Christ's worship, for Christ's truth eats us up, then men will eat us up as well. And so, therefore, this says something to us. We must be prepared to suffer for the cause of God's house and for the cause of God's uh, precious worship. So, we've had sort of Christ was committed, and sort of gone over that Christ had a cause that he was committed to, and, and the finally, Christ was consumed by this, this zeal. And it's very interesting we consider that which consumes us that which uh, uh, affects us and fills our mind, um, it changes us. And, and, and Christ was consumed by a, a holy zeal. This is not Christ losing his temper. This is not, this is not Christ losing his temper in, 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 in a human way, that he's lost it. Because Christ cannot lose his temper. Now, a display of righteous anger is not the same as a sinner like you and me losing the temper. And, and often blaming the other person. Look what you made me do. You know, if you carry on like that, and my children know that expression, comes from my mouth as well. If you don't stop doing this, I'll lose my temper, giving them the blame for my lack of self-control. Which is not, it's not good, it's not correct, but that's the type of thing that does come out of the mouth. But this is not what we have here. This is, a, this is and if I say calculated, then that sounds cynical, and I don't mean to use that word either. This is, again, we have this idea, and a lot of Christians will talk about righteous anger, and that's just an excuse. That's an excuse for their own lack of self-control, for their own temper, um, their own egotistical uh, behavior, their own mercilessness, uh, just to let rip at, at, at someone. But that's not what we're thinking of, and this is not what we see in the Lord Jesus Christ here. He's not smashing things. He's overturning the money just to show that that's, that's something for the floor. He's humiliating the money, as it were, and the money changes. And he's driving the animals out. He's not opening the cages and letting the doves fly away. He's, he's respecting that the fact that the, this is their property. But he's, you know, you're not to be here. Get out of the holy courts of God. Making my father's house a den of thieves, and it should be a house of prayer. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Isn't that wonderful that these Jewish men who have learned and sung the, the, the Psalter all, all their lives, and then they see this, and then the, this, is the, this is the verse that the Holy Spirit makes them think of immediately. And they, they just see that immediately that is applied, and they just know, oh, this is what it is. This is the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. And so this zeal, is, in our regard, we don't have the self-control that Christ has, but it should be a good zeal, a very good zeal. Galatians 4 and verse 18 speaks of things that we should be excited about. 
uh, 4 and verse 18. It says in uh, Galatians 4 and verse 18, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. See, Christian, it's, it's good to be a Jesus freak, shall we say. It's good to be someone who thinks about Christ and speaks about Christ and reads the Bible often. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good. It's good for you because it affects you. It changes you. And that's what, the, that's what Paul says here. They's, um, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And, and, that, and that's what we need. That's what we need to have that zeal. A zeal that's controlled and limited by the Scriptures uh, because we are sinful and our zeal turns into, as I've mentioned, those, those aspects of anger and, and egotistical behavior. But we need to have a scriptural zeal for the things of God, and most especially for Christ himself. We close with a, a thought that Andrew Bonar uh, gave on this very verse. And he's speaking about what it says, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up and he says that that expression hath eaten me up is is where you've it's abs you have been absorbed by it he used that word absorbed absorbed mind and soul it, it, it's taken you up and you are absorbed by it um, I suppose science fiction would use the word assimilated, but it's the idea that it's just become part of you and you are changed by it. You, you can't not, not be changed by it. And so for all, all, all believers, it's good that we have uh, the zeal for the worship of Christ, that it would consume us, that, it was, it, that we have uh, been absorbed by it, it had been absorbed and become part of us. Uh, for ministers especially, that's very true, that we begin and end the ministry uh, with a godly zeal for the worship of God. But for every believer, that's the same. Often when believers think, you know, when they first get saved, they're, they're full of Christ, they're full of all these things. But it is the challenge is not just to cool down and then just become a, become a churchgoer, but, 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 but continue having that zeal for the truth of the Lord and for the worship of God. I mean, he is the reason why we're here. He's the reason why we, we no longer desire that sin, at least not in the quantities that we wanted, and, 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 and had no interest in the things of God, had no interest in, in God himself. And yet Christ has made that whole huge shift uh, in our lives and changed things, and therefore it is absolutely right uh, that, that we the follow him and we are, are obsessed with him and we are absorbed by all things that are to his glory, and especially the zeal of his house that God would grant that it would eat us up also. Amen. Amen. And so, as I mentioned, um, we are in our presbytery week of prayer. It starts at 7 in the morning, at least it does when you live in this time zone. And uh, so we have a, 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 a message from the Lord. We have a few hours of prayer. And then we have a lunch break. And then we have the business meetings, um, uh, which for, for, them, for them it's in the afternoon. Um, and for us it's just starting in midday. And so what we have is, uh, I'm not giving all the details of all the, all the business, it's especially the mission board report that I love to share with, with, uh, with the congregation here when we get the chance. Um, and we've had some good reports. Um, we've had a full report from the Mexican um, mission uh, there under Reverend Jason Boyle. And so I'd just like to give, so we have something from, from Jason Boyle on the Mexican report. Uh, we also have, um, and a number of photos as well. So afterwards, come and have a look through the document. You'll see some of the photos as well. It's nice to see the faces. A lot of the faces I have never seen either. Uh, Liberia, the work there under David DeCanio, Reverend David DeCanio and Joanne Greer. And then we have a, a, a small, um, then we have, no, we have a, a slightly shorter one from the Czech Republic, from Reverend Milos Schultz. And then we have a very small report, uh, important nonetheless from Richard Craig for Jamaica 
And then for the first time in a number of years, and this is, um, this is something that's been concerning us a bit, there's been a lot of contact with our South Korean work. So I've never heard of the South Korean work. Well, that's why it's, it's just been almost, almost very little contact. And one of the reasons why is because we have a, a church, we have a Korean language church in Greenville. So we have two churches in Greenville. And there was a minister there who was uh, very comfortable with English, knew a lot of the ministers, went to, went to um, Bob Jones's university, I think. And, and so I was known by the men and, and knew the men and it was a good contact. And when he passed on, uh, I believe the man who's now taken over is, I think, mostly Korean speaking and sort of like just in with their own Korean families. And, and so there's not much contact in any case. Uh, and that's also led to, I think, a bit of a, a lack of contact um, with our church there in Gwangmyong, um, just outside of Seoul in, in Korea, South Korea. So there's even a little report from them as well. So I'll try to just to pick out a few points um, and then uh, come to me afterwards and have a look at the, the pictures as well. Um, uh, that's good to see them as well. So we'll go to um, Reverend Jason Boyle. As you may know, there is, a there is a connection between the Reverend Boyle. Reverend Boyle, yeah, I believe from a, he may have originally been from Greenville, actually, but uh, he married a young lady from southern Alberta, and so that's his connection with us. And in fact, the little car that I drive used to belong to, belong to her. Uh, so we've got the pictures are in here as well. I think the whole family picture is in here. Yeah, yeah. So... So anyway, Reverend Jason Boyle, he, he says, um, in November the children's Sunday school room was finished, and so they have, like adult, uh, they have essentially an adult Bible class and the children's Sabbath school as we do, and the, the both of those started again in, in December. Of course, they, in Mexico, have been under a lot of restrictions as well. Attendance has been good, including two unconverted families bringing their children to Sunday school and even attending the adult Bible class themselves and the regular worship service. Four new families have begun attending regularly in the last few months, and so Sunday attendance averages 65 to 70. That's, that's become a really uh, a good and stable congregation uh, there. And in February, there was a deacon election, and the, the congregation elected its fifth uh, deacon, and he's taken over, the, he's become the treasurer as well and the overseer of the finances of the other mission churches because there are more churches as well. In December, he was able to visit Lalo Peña's church in Cordoba, Veracruz, um, where there are missions, where there are meetings being held. So we have our main church in Mexico City, but there are other places around Mexico City and maybe others elsewhere um, that are, so as it were, under the under the protection and under the, the help of, of Reverend Jason Boyle. And so Lalo Pena uh, would be one of them. Uh, and at the beginning of February, we had our first Mexican week of prayer. Uh, and and that's, that's ideal for, the, uh, not all of these men are very fluent or very able in English. And so it's a lot easier for them. In fact, just as we were having our um, lunch break, you know, two of the Spanish speaking men stayed on Zoom and then started, you know, chatting to each other. Um, in Spanish. So you know, it's ideal for them to have that time together. And so they had, like we have a week of prayer. Now this last February there was the first ever Mexican uh, week of prayer. And so the, all the five pastors and their families except Ramon, uh, Ramon Sosa, he couldn't get over there. Uh, but the other fa pastors and their families, they had that time together uh, even, even on the Sunday services. Excuse me. So it was a time of, of spiritual refreshment uh, for everyone. And, um, and since then, two of those five ministers have actually left their secular employment to devote themselves fully to the, to the work of God in their ministry and in their own pastoral preparation because the Reverend Boyle also gives a lot of teaching um, in theology and other matters to help these men who, who desire to be reformed preachers um, and so the Lord is using him in, in a great way. Um, and there's also another man called Wenceslau and Pepe, and they have their churches as well. You'll see their pictures uh, as we look 
uh, as you look on in this in this documentation. Uh, I mentioned, um, I hope I mentioned it was happening. It did happen. His last presbytery meeting in October, uh, Ramon Sosa was ordained as a minister, and so he is now a minister of that uh, of a congregation. There now, that congregation is not a Free Presbyterian work. Um, but it could be at some point in the future. And he's saying there's been some interest for, for baptism and for membership, and so he's organizing classes for those matters as well. He continues to prepare and grade exams for those taking the Spanish version of the seminary classes. And, uh, and in February, the, his family, so um, uh, Reverend Jason Boyle and Danielle and the two boys, they moved to a new house, and they're very grateful for the Lord's provision. And then there's another man called Jair, or Jair, I don't know how he, they would pronounce it in Mexico, um, and his church in, in uh, Tehuacan, um, in a place called Puebla. Puebla. So those who know Mexico, and I think there's one or two in our, in our midst who know it, um, that's where they come from. So lo lovely family photos here that you should look at before you go home this evening. So that's uh, some uh, wonderful updates there from, uh, from the work in Mexico uh, and those areas. Of course, that would include the Dominican Republic. Um, it wouldn't include Jamaica because Jamaica is English speaking and Patois speaking. Um, uh, but it does include the Dominican Republic and maybe some other places that I'm not aware of, but def definitely Mexico and the Dominican Republic. Next, we have Liberia. Liberia place on the um, west of Africa, a homeland that was set up for freed slaves um, from the Americas and from Africa, um, hence the name Liberia. And so Reverend De Canio gives a full uh, report, um, says the work in Liberia continues to be very steady and strong. There have been challenges, but the Lord continues to bless us. And so they, there's a few things he, he, he goes into, uh, talks about uh, Joanne's deputation uh, home. So last uh, fall, she went back, to, um, went back to Northern Ireland and was going around giving deputation meetings, meetings to give information about the work to encourage that person, uh, that prayerful and even financial support as well. It's good to keep people in, informed of this, of this type of work, and that's part of what I'm doing this evening. And so that, uh, that, uh, well, there's some details in there we won't go into, but that was a successful time and also time with their own family. Uh, there's also been um, the ability to get electricity. Electricity is being uh, made available uh, where they are. They, they use a generator, a uh, full-time generator, and so they're, they're always paying for the... Uh, for the fuel to run the generator. Uh, there has been somebody, and I can't remember where they're from, it might be from the, uh, from the North American churches who's volunteered just to pay the, the bills for the fuel, for the, for, uh, constantly, you know, and, um, the, for the generators. Uh, but there is the chance that they could get connected to this new uh, electric line uh, that's been uh, installed around the area where they are. Um, they're also um, looking at uh, new property uh, or getting the existing property that they have that they use for the bookstore. It's used for the children's work. Um, uh, what else is it used for? I'm, I think that I'm wondering whether they also use it for the church building upstairs as well, if it has an upstairs. Um, but in any case, they've been looking at getting uh, that land uh, improved upon. I mean, it's in within shops. Uh, in the city, and if they can get that extended backwards or and get it may maybe rebuilt and, and, and enlarged. So these are all schemes that are still uh, being looked into. The church services itself, because of course, when Mr. DeCanio went over in 2010, there was no church, there was no radio station, there was no bookstore. So he and later on, uh, Mrs. G Miss Greer, um, they've be been working on this, of course, under God. But they do ha now have a... a uh, for a number of years now, a, a, a regular uh, church meetings, um, and that's that's an established uh, place. They have some 
uh, I believe they've been having quite a number. I'm just trying to look for the number of the normal church service that they would have. Yes, our morning worship at 11 a.m. is with a consistent 50 congregants uh, and others that are less regular in their attendance. And he's been, uh, this has been a good attention in the services during the preaching. He said, he says, I recently finished up a series on covenant theology, dealing with the covenant of works and the covenant of redemption and the covenant of grace and the covenants of, of promise and, and all these other matters. And, and he was uh, even coming about some historical matters and the Marrow Controversy, if anyone's heard of the Marrow Controversy, it's something that happened in the Scottish church many years ago. So uh, that's good to hear my brother teaching good doctrine in the church there. Um, some testimonials, so we still see a number of individuals that visit us from Pentecostal churches and some stay, some leave. And there's a young man called Victor, and that's the first time I've heard his name. He came in through the radio station and came from a mega church in Nigeria. And, uh, but he's been listening and he's been uh, convinced of the doctrines. A converted Muslim called uh, Hassan attends, uh, not as regularly as he could. Uh, but that's encouraging, and a converted Roman Catholic has been has been visiting uh, and attending, and his name is Paul, and he's sincere and has been faithfully attending for over a year now. So, and a lot of these are through the through the radio ministry. Uh, does he mention anything? I don't think he mentions anything specifically about the radio ministry, but of course they have they have the Free Presbyterian Radio over there, and that, so that's broadcast. I think 24 hours a day. Um, you know, it's just run off automatically. He just sets things up on the computer, and the computer does the rest. Um, but also, they have it broadcast uh, via the internet and s in various countries around. Uh, they're also able to follow it. So a lot of our men are are regularly on there. Um, so a lot of uh, Dr. Kearns's old uh, sermons would be on there, but also Mr. Golliger and and other ministers who are still active. Um, are broadcast from there as well. Now the theological training that he is busy with, if you remember last October I mentioned that there was, there was a man called Sovereign, a man called Christian, uh, that they were attending the classes. I remember he was teaching them Greek and theology and uh, he's still doing that, they're still attending, they're still learning. And Sovereign himself is quite a young man, he's only 21 years old. And he was brought up uh, a Roman Catholic uh, but uh, he has been still studying, and uh, Sovereign has been um, learning how to help run the radio station, which is really uh, a good thing for Reverend Decanio. So he's he's starting to become a help there as well. And Christian has also been keen in uh, continuing his his learning, um, as he thinks that he notices a, a call and a draw from the Lord to Christian. Uh, ministry. So a few other details about about all the paperwork that he has to do for it. You know, you'd think you'd think a land, an African country. You know, you wouldn't think it would be so uh, like a like a Western country full of paperwork. And he said, but according to Reverend Decanio, he says it's it's just as bad, if not worse, the amount of paperwork and bureaucracy you have to deal with. Um, so, um, yeah, poor man. But he has to be in charge of that. And there's, there's, there are yearly, there are yearly um, um, certificates and licenses that he needs for the radio, for the frequency broadcasting, for the, for the, for the, for the compound and for the water. And I mean, absolutely everything, these things need to be kept uh, on, in control. But we see there that um, there's still great activity uh, for the Lord and people are still hearing the gospel and still coming in and being fed. Now the Czech Republic, uh, some people still say Czechoslovakia, but no, it's, it's, it's been two separate countries for at least 25 years. The Czech Republic then, we have uh, our brother, the Reverend Milos Schultz. And I don't know if you remember when, when we had the uh, fall uh, mission report uh, last year, uh, that there was a young lady, a young girl actually, Laura, who, who came to this vacation Bible school and, and, and uh, or to the, um, yeah, the children's camp and uh, had a desire to attend the worship services and, and it really seemed as if the Lord was working on her heart. 
Um, and that was a great encouragement. We were encouraged to hear this as well. And he says, but there was more to come. In the fall, we organized a church picnic for the purpose of inviting children from the camp in order to reach out to them with the gospel once again. And I mentioned the salvation of Laura, and as a result, another girl came to our morning service the following Sabbath. It wasn't long after that that little Hannah made a profession of salvation herself. She, like many of the local children, come from a troubled home and needs much prayer. Uh, the, there are many things in her life and environment, many pressures that would keep her pressures that would keep her from following after the Lord. And in the month of December, despite extremely high COVID numbers in our country, and shortly after the Lord helped us through a bout of COVID ourselves, we were able to hold some special meetings and minister to people in our community. And we're glad to have uh, Laura's mother with us in one service, and glad she could hear the testimonies of several people in the church. And then Hugo, a fellow medical student of our son, Timothy, uh, came to a number of the services. Timothy has been witnessing to this young man over the years. I think I remember this from his last report. And now both of them are, are studying in the same medical faculty. And I was grateful that on these two occasions I was able to speak very openly with him about the needs of his own soul. Another unique opportunity was when we had the principal of the local school where my wife works over to the house for a visit. The Lord has given us favor in his eyes and we are very thankful for that. So he, the teachers in the school, continue, school children continue to be in our prayers. And in January, we had our church week of prayer. Uh, the people in the work are growing in the Lord and fighting the good fight of the faith. And a few other details, uh, but that finishes that report. And Jamaica, the congregation in Little London, Jamaica, is delighted that all the COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted. The Prime Minister recently announced that all the restrictions would come to an end. And due to this, we are planning a, a, on recommencing all the services that were discontinued, such as the children's meeting and the youth fellowship. And he doesn't say it, but no doubt the Lord's Day services also. It says, the Lord has been really and truly blessing and edifying, revealing himself to us through his word as we serve him. Um, and due to Brother Randy's relocation from the parish, he and his family find it very challenging to attend all the regular services. However, we are happy when they're able to make it. So that's Richard Craig of the Free Presbyterian Church of Jamaica in Little London. And we have some pictures of, of them as well. And let me finish then with that report uh, from Reverend uh, Siong Kyu Lee uh, from Gwangmyong uh, Free Presbyterian Church. And just very briefly, he says, my family left uh, the Korean Free Presbyterian Church in Greenville in 2014 and returned to Korea. I, study, I studied at Bob Jones and learned about the Free Presbyterian Church. Um, does he say so here? No, we'll get to that. In 2014, we started our first ministry in Gwangmyong, near Seoul, in Korea. Our church began with two families worshiping together on a weekly basis. And so that uh, continued. In, in November of that year, we managed to rent a place for worship. And our first location was a very small building. We were comforted by the visit of Elder Stephen Lee. So Stephen Lee is, one, is a, an elder in the Greenville congregation. He's also the man behind Sermon Audio. So that might give you an idea who he's talking about, obviously of Korean extraction. Uh, after that, Pastor Han Sang Hoon's family visited and um, uh, he came to the seminary in Northern Ireland for a few months or for a year and, and got to know Pastor Miller and Ruth, his wife. Um, and so they visited at uh, one point about three years ago, four years ago. Um, it says, currently there are 25 members that regularly uh, attend, um, some who've stayed away because of the COVID uh, restrictions, and he hopes that those who've gone away will, will come back again. Um, there were strong restrictions put upon the churches by the Korean government, and so all meetings of the church were suspended, except for the regular services, um, there was a strong sense of rejection in Korean society about inviting people to church or preaching the gospel. Uh, but we're now in a stage when all these restrictions are being removed. We have an, a morning service at 11, and we have a 1 p.m. Bible study. Um, and we have uh, elders, uh, elders studying or leading study groups and the Bible studies for the youngs. And we're doing the catech catechizing for the children. 
as well or for the teenagers and then uh, Bible stories for the children and so there's a midweek prayer meeting there's a Saturday morning book meeting and a gospel class for children so we can see they're they're very active we don't want to go into all the details and uh, but he has a number of prayer points uh, that he would be filled with the Spirit of God to deliver the, the gospel powerfully, um, that the restrictions would be completely overcome for COVID-19 and everything can get back to normal until October. Uh, please pray that I added to the till October thing. Uh, please pray that we can find a space for our Bible study other than our current uh, worship service. So that's a number of reports and again some lovely photos that uh, you can look at afterwards so that's it's uh, encouraging to see um that the lord um is pleased to um use um use others within the denomination of course he's using others throughout the world to build his church but just in those few works there and it's good to get that update uh, from korea also so we can we have a number of things and people to pray for. Um, so Mexico and all those works there, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, um, Le Czech Republic, uh, Liberia, and and Korea as as well. So we'll just uh, close this part of the meeting with a word of prayer, please, and then we will have our word time of prayer. Lord, we do thank thee that thou art still building thy church. Lord, we know that because thou hast reached down and saved uh, our souls of those of us who are saved. And we thank thee, Lord, for thy mercies towards us. And we see that thy mercies going out to save thy people are nonstop. And thou hast sent forth uh, laborers into these harvest fields uh, to speak of Christ. And thou hast drawn people to the gospel to hear and to be saved and to be delivered from, from false gospels and false Christianities and false religions. And Lord, and we, we glorify uh, thy name and we praise thee, Lord, that thou art continuing to build uh, thy church. Thou art continuing to show the power of the gospel and the greatness of thy grace. Uh, and the grace is so much greater than, than our sin and we thank thee for that. Uh, Lord, we do pray that thou would help us to remember these works in prayer and bring them before the throne of heavenly mercy and grace. And Lord, that thou would continue to help these missionaries and these works and, and bring many more out of the kingdom of Satan and into the, into the wonderful light of the, of the kingdom of Christ. And Lord, have mercy, we pray. And even those men that we've considered this evening who are interested in the gospel ministry, that Lord, that thou would make their paths straight and make it clear and we think even also in our own area in our own uh, province and land of those who are being uh, challenged by that inner call uh, lord that, uh, that the discernment and the, and thy spirit would be granted that it would be understood whether it is of thee or not uh, and lord when that has been made clear lord that thou would open the doors uh, for the necessary preparation and then work also and so lord we do pray for for thee to open those doors of work remember our brother andrew fitton also and his need to uh, to or his desire to serve thee full-time in christian ministry and so lord we do pray lord hear our prayers we thank thee for these good reports and for thy word also granted to us and lord that we would know that godly zeal for thine house and for thy worship planted in us we pray uh, lord that we would not be ashamed of the gospel of christ nor the worship that pleases him we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you